Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending October the 21st, 2022. Big week uh, in terms of the U.S. Treasuries, okay, so the risk-free 10-year benchmark uh, popped a new 14-year high, okay, 428s trimmed off a little bit. Uh, they sold off a little bit today, uh, and, and, you know, midway through the trading day is around 425 or so, 426, uh, but it's it, it's right there. We'll talk, I'd like to speak to that later on uh, in this in this discussion. So stay tuned for that and in terms of its psychological impact on the market, okay, and what, what, it, what levels that we're, we're likely looking for as that goes. But first, I want to address four stages, four psychological stages of retirement planning, and what we need to be prepared for as we get into that, okay? So let's get into that. All right, this is a, this is from, derived from this presentation is derived from a psychological study done by Dr. Riley Moynes. It's available on YouTube. I get you a citation on uh, coming up here in the next slide, but I thought it was really good and wanted to share it with you. Okay, so let's look into. He's, he's divided the psychological stages based upon his own experience into four different uh, four different stages here. The first stage one is vacation, and he says that that lasts about a year. And this is this newfound freedom and exploitation. Uh, some some uh, people like Tom Hegna have referred to this as the go-go years. All of a sudden, we've got this euphoria that allows us to do whatever we want to do. This newfound freedom and just uh, and and just run on vacation and have fun. Next, we get into stage two, which is loss and loss. So after the euphoria wears off. Every time you reach a new change in life, a new mountaintop, you know, you got to be prepared for. Nobody prepared me for this during my youth, but you got to be prepared for coming off the mountaintop and back down into the valleys. And the, and, and the stage is loss and loss. So the big five that we go into in, 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 in leaving our, our careers that we've been engaged in for 30, you know, or for a number of years, whatever the, the length is, loss of routine, identity, a lot of time relationships, those work relationships, more important than what we thought. Okay, R relationships, loss of purpose, what do I do now? And loss of power, whatever came with your former position, okay? And you're going to be lost, Dr. Uh, Riley says, until you come to face with the three Ds, potential divorce, big, big changes in life often comes with, you know, a change in the marital relationship or a significant other relationship followed by or accompanied by uh, the depression that comes from the other losses that you've uh, that you've had and then decline okay and in in terms of uh, your status your perceived status in the world as time goes by and so he's saying here be ready to address fear anxiety and depression that goes hand in hand with those stages. From there, stage three comes to place. So after you vitulation in stage two and, and, and grab the hole and says, okay, let's do something to change this. How do I make life meaningful again? You go through this trial and error phases, okay? Try something new, ah, disappointment. Okay, well, let's try something else. And you have to keep doing this give and take to prevent backsliding into stage two and that depression, okay? And, uh, or, you know, addressing the change in, in marital relationships, if it did, or if you figured out how to live together continually in this new life changes, because a lot of times financial pressures will precipitate uh, a, a divorce and that type of thing. Whatever, as, until you come to terms with that and work how to get out of stage two by going through stage three, trial and error, you're not going to be able to get to stage four, and that's where we want to be. And that's finding purpose in life, okay? More often than not, it comes in service to others. I want to be the first to tell you that uh, it's been the honor of my life to go through this process and come out with, you know, a new uh, formation of Asset Guidance Group going into the future, working with my son, Jared. That's an honor. That's a huge honor. I don't think any child could, uh, could, could put on their parent other than demonstrating a willingness to work and learn and grow a new enterprise with the parent as they grow forward. It serves many, many other people. And most of all, it, uh, it, it provides me with a sense of happiness and purpose in life and going forward, and as well as building career for the long term 
of the enterprise to go on and serve people like you as, as we have. So that's what makes us happy, okay? Just wanted to uh, uh, break this down into some components that uh, are meaningful for you and, 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 and make you aware of this potential that exists out there so that you're not kind of caught unawares on that. Okay, as I discussed earlier, let's hop into a real brief analysis of the 10 year and its impact on the market levels, what we expect, you know, uh, spoiler alert, uh, the, the math says you could be ready for another 15 to 16% down move. The emotion though, Let's take a look at that and see how that goes before we wrap up. Just a couple more minutes, we'll wrap up for this week. Okay, first let's look at this hypothetical that I constructed out of existing data. And what we're looking at here, the top line, is the is the actual uh, S&P that's being reported. The S&P 500 is being reported uh, through StockCharts.com right now. And then the bottom line is a, is a calculation interpolating uh, based upon... Uh, current uh, U.S. 10-year uh, Treasury uh, yields uh, where the level might want to go to. Now, realize that uh, this is a hypothetical, hypothetical illustration. No one can invest directly into the S&P 500. I'm, I'm presenting this for illustrative purposes only, okay? And so there's a disclaimer here that I'm required to show you. And so take a look at that disclaimer also. But also realize here that I'm showing the hypothetical bottom line levels based uh, in, that I've interpolated through calculations based on historical data, okay, provided again by StockCharts.com. But the thing is, is that I'm using that for continuity's sake, just so that you have a nice curve to follow along there and look, okay. And, and the point being is that uh, right now we're based on current earnings that we have reported weekly basis aggregate earnings of the S&P 500. Again, no one can invest directly into the index, but uh, this would show what giving, give, and, and, and the columns on the bottom, okay, is what the actuals are in the orange and then the, the, the blue shaded are the, are the interpolated of what really they could be if we had uh, our performance based totally on the current levels of the uh, 10 year US 10 year treasury, all right, the benchmark. And so you can see that these are all lower. So, really, what we would be looking for is a much lower acceptable uh, price earnings multiple because of the risk premium. Uh, uh, given where current risk-free rates really are. The only point that really matters here is the final point and uh, the data point is what I'm talking about. And that is about a 16 and a third percent lower than where the current levels are. So you would actually be looking at a level around, uh, you know, uh, you're you're at 36.57 or 36.58 or so today. What you'd really be looking for is something around 30.50. All right, and I've been preaching this for several weeks now. That's really where you would be if if the market was totally grabbed on to 30.50. Would be if you were actually pricing in the long-term nature of the current 10 10-year yield or where where it actually would be in order to have a rational. Uh, risk premium in place. Uh, and, and currently, a, a rational risk premium being, uh, I'm interpolating around 3%, okay, based upon the historical risk premiums uh, of previous year's data. So that's that's where that number derived from. And, and these are kind of, I'm, I'm speaking round numbers here that I built the curve around. Point is, really that I'm trying to make to you right here is the, between the two lines, okay, the top lines where it is, Bottom line is really where the data, uh, arguably mathematically, says it should be given a rational risk premium over current uh, over current ten year yields. It's not there. What is that gap? That's simply the market. Okay, that's the difference between a rational market and the actual market. Why? Because we're human beings. We're human beings. That's where the trade is. That's where the trade is. Okay. And, and, and we will see, we will see as time rolls on how it, how it uh, coincides, how it merges, if it does at all. But again, the market is pricing in long-term expectations, not just where the 10-year is right now. So again, that's the reason I started this whole discussion off with a headline, waiting for the 10-year to blink, waiting for the 10-year to adjust, and maybe those yields uh, come back down. Uh, based upon longer term expectations rather than where the Fed is with its rate increases right now. All right, 
That's enough for this, uh, this type of analysis. Let's hop back out. Okay, well, that'll be a wrap for this week. As we speak, we're right towards the end of the trading day. Uh, the S&P 500 is back above the 3,700 mark. Everything else is up. It's been a really good, uh, really good day for a rally. Looks like, uh, looks like the market is trying to price in the fact that maybe the Fed will back off because of the 10-year uh, yields being so high, among other reasons. Who knows? We'll see. Just remember, we're moving back towards the top of the trading range, so be careful out there. I've already shown you that the markets don't always behave rationally. Because why? Because we're humans, and humans don't always behave rationally, okay? Most important thing is enjoy your weekend. Until next week, you stay happy. It's the key to longevity.